If you've made it to my video, then it means you're probably excited or just curious about this game, just like me. Today, I'm going to be talking about some of the interesting aspects about Exo Primal and the community and its game director. But honestly, if I didn't even play the beta, I probably wouldn't be making this video right now. For some reason, the videos and advertisements really didn't capture my interest. On the outside, it looks like a bunch of mashed up Capcom concepts that weirdly didn't attract me immediately. But when I actually gave the game a shot during the open betas, I actually had a blast playing the game even without all of its main content. So I don't know what the hell's going on, but the whole thing surrounding this game is interesting, right? Capcom putting out a new IP, testing the waters to see how a fully priced $60 online only multiplayer game is gonna do. In an era where realistically this game looks like it should be free to play. Thank God this is available on Xbox Game Pass for 10 bucks a month because otherwise this would really make Capcom look like they don't even understand the industry they were working in. However, I do feel bad for the PlayStation players. Sorry, you guys gotta pay full price for this thing. Luckily for all of us though, it seems like the director actually gives a shit about his own game. So at least that's one major thing going for it. Just keep in mind, I wrote this video and worked on it before the game is even out. Also, before we start talking about the nitty gritty, I just want to give a quick shout out to the Exo Primal Discord. I got to have a pretty enjoyable conversation with one of the Discord admins there, and it seems like there are a lot of passionate Capcom fans all hanging out together, anxious to see how well this game does. So go check out the Exo Primal Discord server if you want to hang out with some other Capcom nerds. I think in general, there are a lot of weird feelings floating around about this game. Mostly, it seems that there is a appropriate amount of cautious optimism, just because on the outside, it seems like Capcom has some scarce faith in their own brand new IP. I mean, half of the latest Exo Primal showcase was fucking countdown timer with ads showing their other games and that one goddamn cursed mobile Mega Man game. At least by the end of it. I was thankfully excited for the release of the game and the new content coming out after launch. But as someone who's excited for this game myself, the whole vibe around Exo Primal feels like we're finally gonna meet that long distance girlfriend that we've been slowly investing our emotions into for the past year. We don't know if the relationship's gonna last or if she's gonna have enough content or more importantly, if the dinosaurs are gonna be getting the huge boob mods that the other Capcom games get. One of the reasons I wanted to make this video in particular is mainly because of the director itself. So this is Takura Hiro here. So this is Takuro Takuro Hirooka. Hirako Hirooka. Takura Hirooka. Takura Hirooka. Harry Taco. <laughs> According to MobyGames.com and VideoGamesChronicle.com, he was in charge of planning for Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate. He was a game designer for Monster Hunter Generations. Got a special thanks for working on Resident Evil 5 and its Gold Edition. And he was a lead director for Monster Hunter Iceborne. I mean, that's a really good track record. So I'm sure he's been working on this game concept for a while now. Because one of the interesting problems that I think he's trying to solve with this game concept is possibly how to make a multiplayer game with story with no actual story mode. Basically, as you play through the multiplayer game modes, you're being drip fed the story the more and more as you keep playing the multiplayer sessions. And realistically, we aren't gonna be playing this game for its lore or story. But also, having lore and history and a background for your world to exist in can help the player become more immersed in the world that they're watching or interacting with. So I gotta give props for Takedo trying to make this concept work. What he's trying to accomplish with this game isn't easy. I just hope there's a proper button for skipping cutscenes. Now this is all just assumption, but there's something else I'm sure you're wondering about as well. Why the hell is this multiplayer only game $60 straight off the bat? It wouldn't make much sense for a director to put his first debut brand new game on the line like this. Well, if Capcom as a publisher is being sketchy about how they're advertising this game, then I'm sure they have something to do with it. I mean, if they're paying for the bills for how this game gets made, then they of course get to decide how this is handled. So if they still want to make enough money but allow people an affordable way to try out the game, then I guess it makes sense for them to be putting it on the Xbox Game Pass. And by the time they take it off Game Pass, it seems like they might have enough content dropped in the game to make it worth the whole $60. Obviously, 
you could make some comparisons to this game being some kind of Anthem Overwatch hybrid. But there's one thing this game might achieve that those two had a ton of difficulty trying to do correctly. And I think what Exoprimal is trying to do is be the most possible fun without any of the bullshit getting in the way. I'm not going to say it's going to do better or worse than either of those games because it's hard to know right now. But Overwatch is filled with its own massive problems that also hang directly on character balancing. Wouldn't really sometimes you just want a fun team battle game to play. Also, none of that PvE shit is coming. And then Anthem had so much bullshit surrounding its own progression and development that in the end, all I wanted to do was just beat shit up in an Iron Man suit. Now that's forever gone to the history of embarrassing video game deaths. It seems like we're finally getting that chance to have that team-based power fantasy again with Exo Primal. So the next thing you're probably wondering is, What's the deal with Capcom and dinosaurs? I think Takarito actually gives us a hint as to why these things actually make for a compelling video game enemy type. In one of the interviews, he basically says that, Historically, dinosaurs are some of the strongest creatures that have ever roamed. So when players are going up against dinosaurs, the reality is that it's the strongest versus the strongest, and it's a battle of who's going to come out on top as the strongest of the strongest. I am an AI-generated voice. Please, someone kill me. And at first, you would sort of brush this off as some sort of basic reason as to why there's even dinosaurs in the first place. But here's kind of the genius thing about this, and it's probably why Monster Hunter even has dinosaurs in the first place. Ever since any of us were children, we have grown up knowing that dinosaurs are these big, heavy, bulking, destructive beasts. There have been so many pieces of entertainment and pop culture over time that show the pure, raw, primal power of these big-ass motherfuckers. Like Jurassic Park or even The Land Before Time. Or shit, if I really even think about it, it's even the first theme surrounding the original Power Ranger suits. I don't know why the f the Power Rangers even needed dinosaurs to begin with. I mean, you guys should be watching Kamen Rider anyways. And at one point, we know these assholes actually existed in reality a long ass time ago. All of the groundwork has already been laid out since childhood for dinosaurs to be a deeply subconscious, intimidating type of enemy to fight in a video game. And you know what else is cool? an Iron Man suit. Do I need to explain myself further? Who doesn't want to be some normal guy jumping into a suit that can make them fly and shoot missiles and stop a train and more importantly, beat the ever goddamn shit out of motherfucking dinosaurs? The more I thought about this game concept and why the director might have wanted to make a game like this, the more I began to realize that to Kinko Vierkvigdar was really trying to combine two badass things into one fun power fantasy fighting experience. The last thing I wanted to mention is that it seems like he's honestly trying to make the best game he can for the players who will enjoy it the most. During the beta, initially a lot of people were turned off by the idea of this strictly being a PvEVP experience, so when they put out a survey and got feedback about what people disliked about it, they actually took the time and changed this game from no longer being a strictly a PvEVP experience, which is kind of a big deal because even making small changes with a game like this takes an entire small team of people to make sure it's a lot of, basically it's a lot of work that has to go through a whole bunch of fucking people. Blah, 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 blah. Now, for some reason, you can't turn on strict PvE matches until you get past a small portion of the game's progression, which I don't know if that's for actual lore reasons or to get people to experience its more competitive side. But my guess is that the main people who even stick around enjoying this game for its entire lifetime will probably be playing the core PvE VP experience anyways. But the fact that the director himself is encouraging actual feedback to make these kinds of changes means that he might be one of the few directors who actually wants to see his own game thrive with a community that holds it up. How long these changes will take to be implemented after feedback is anyone's guess right now, but let's hope we don't have to wait a full three damn months to get the much needed overdue updates. And even the updates themselves look like he's trying to squeeze the most juice he can get out of his own content by, you know, not only adding more challenges and maps and exosuits over time, but even adding different variants of the exosuits to hopefully fill the gaps of content we wish we could get sooner. Also, just gonna shout out how cool it is we're gonna be getting a Monster Hunter collab in January. And look at the fucking variant for Roadblock. It's basically a goddamn Cherno Alpha skin from Pacific Rim. How cool is that shit?
Exo Primal is really a new sort of niche game in its own sort of hybrid genre, and I'm guessing the game won't explode in popularity or be the next big thing, but if this game has a core audience that is big enough to keep it alive and a director that actually gives a shit for the next three to five years, then I think that's good enough for its community, and that's good enough for me. If you made it to the end of the video, I really appreciate you watching the whole thing. I've been specifically making videos for PSO2 and GS ever since I started this channel, but I'm gonna start branching out and making videos about other games like Exo Primal. So if you like what you saw, then commenting and hitting the like button and subscribing helps the channel grow. It feels weird using my PSO2 character over another game, but fuck it. NGS is slowly killing itself, so I might as well get the most out of it. I really did have a lot of fun playing the beta, and I know this game isn't gonna be for everyone, but if Capcom buries another goddamn IP I like, I'm gonna lose my fucking shit. You guys already did this with Beautiful Joe and Lost Planet, and I'm pretty sure Gotcha Force is dead as fuck.